square wave to this operational amplifier, our output is as shown on the oscilloscope. This is our input signal. We go from negative 1 volt to positive 4 volts. Notice the inverting nature of the circuit. When this is a negative 1 volt, we have a positive 1 volt out of the operational amplifier. When it goes to positive 4 volts, we go to negative 4 volts. So it's, the output is inverted from what we saw in our previous passive RC circuit. Now let's take a look at the response of the output voltage as we change the input frequency. Going back to the arbitrary waveform generator, let's increase the frequency to 200 hertz. You'll notice that we're still getting the same type of behavior we are not quite getting to steady state response when this pulse turns back off. That trend will tend to continue as we increase the frequency. So our response is becoming squelched out. Okay, so we don't get to our full DC gain because the pulse doesn't stay on for long enough to allow that to happen. And in fact, as we continue to increase the frequency, this amplitude peak to peak of the output will continue to become smaller and smaller. In the technical parlance, we are filtering out the high frequency signals. Okay, it's not allowing the high frequency stuff through. It does allow a full response for low frequency inputs. After we've verified the time constant of this circuit, We'll take a look at changing what is called the frequency of the input oscillations. We'll be putting a square wave into this. What we're going to do is make the duration or the distance between pulses of that square wave shorter and shorter. What we'll notice is that the circuit no longer has time to respond to the input once the duration of the pulses becomes short compared to the time constant of the circuit. So what we can actually do with this circuit is get rid of high frequency inputs. Later on when we talk about sinusoidal responses, we'll look at this circuit as a low pass filter. It lets low frequency signals through and it discards high frequency signals. In the final portion of this part of the lab assignment, we will apply a load to our active circuit. Now originally, when we looked at this circuit, it has essentially the same time constant and the same DC gain as our passive circuit. So why would we want to go to the additional effort of using an active circuit? This part of this lab assignment is to illustrate that. If we load this circuit, the power provided to the load is to some extent provided by the external voltage supplies of the operational amplifier. So once we've loaded this circuit, our output voltage V out should look very similar to what we got from the unloaded circuit. It's ex much easier to take this circuit as a subsystem and apply that to an overall system design than a passive RC circuit whose characteristics can change once you've connected it up to another subsystem. Let's examine the effects of adding a load to this circuit now. This is the output terminal of my circuit. I've grounded this blue strip, so adding the load resistor to this circuit does not significantly change the output waveform. Likewise, removing the load again also does not change that waveform. The active circuit is more or less insensitive to adding additional stages to its output.